What's going on guys? We are here at HWPO headquarters. Uh, this is our relatively new facility and we are here to take you on a full tour. So let's go. Starting off, it's kind of like the center lobby and we have each branch branching out from here. So this room, community workspace, board room. So anytime we have like uh, all employees in office, ha all hands on deck, this is where it happens. Or if you're just kind of doing some busy work and want some company. Got so, some. It's where all the magic happens right there <laughs> with nah, these people. Nah, magic happens in there. <laughs> <laughs> this is very important. Then this room uh, right now is just a community workspace, kind of like an overflow space, but this will get turned into uh, our podcast studio mechanics room. I'm not sure what to call it. Chadrick, you know. Meteor room. Sweet. Meteor room. This is our kind of podcast studio. So biggest perk about this building is that the old gym, you could either only train, film daily videos, do a pot, like you could only do one thing at a time because we had to, there was a one space for everything. So biggest perk of this, we can work continuously and podcast studio is far enough on the other side of the gym that it's quiet in here as, uh, as everyone's still training. So we, we can multitask now. Content. Yeah. Content. Soon enough, my home will just be my home. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss it though. Like there are aspects of it that it's like. Yeah, oh, we shut the lights off, save energy. Yeah. No. There, there, there were always people around. Uh, we're environmentally sound here. <laughs> so, <you know>. Boing. <laughs> we got hallway of offices. So everyone kind of has, has their own office. If they want their quiet workspace, taking calls. Uh, what do we have? Seven offices. And we got kitchen, storage. Let's go to the fun part. I have to say that these have been here for like a couple of weeks now. We're going to get to hang them, but it gives me the same chills every time I walk by it. I, it like, took me. It's like a pitch. Every one of those is like these deep, amazing memories. It's such a cool run, dude. I had, I had all of these wrapped up. The last three. So the first two got framed years ago. These last three sat in a Hannaford's bag like just rolled up. So I had to dig those out. I literally have every, I have a Lear jersey from every one of your yeah. years that has not been washed. And oh, still yeah. in a bag that I'm oh. gonna frame at some point. So I'm, I'm scared to smell them right about now, but. Oh, I thought one of these, it might, it might be the one that you had. I think it was from the early, like 2016. And when we're dunking it in the Yeah, oh, so it is this one that has the stains on it because, uh, I got the leader jersey and then I only had one. So I had to wear it for like three days in a row. And like after the second day, I was, I went to the people running the cup. I was like, guys, can I please have another jersey? Like this one is disgusting. And they were like, sorry, we only have one. I was like, there's 15 <laughs> events. Why would you only have one? I like, never had someone wear it for this long. <laughs> and so they were like, we'll, we'll wash it for you. I was like, great. I come back the next morning. They had taken it, dunked it in the ice bath and then tied it up on a fan and left it overnight. So like I walked in at first thing in the morning, California, just like my leader jersey flapping in the wind. <laughs> I had like these tassels in the corner. Smell worse. Hi, Sammy. Hi. Oh, hello, Samantha. A little office tour. Yeah. Samantha, baby Eddie. Baby Eddie. This yep. is the camera. Yep. Time, time stamp, 37 <laughs> weeks. I know, 37 weeks. <laughs> Working hard. <laughs> bathrooms. Start them young. Showers, bathrooms. Bathrooms, showers. And now the fun part. This is where the, the other type of work gets done. So, this is our gym, locker room here behind you. It's kind of just a place, dumping zone for everyone's gear, clothes. It gets, gets hectic in here. No, notice the spacing. So everybody has a locker, Jason has three. Yeah, Jason so. takes up the whole looking, bench. He's looking for more real estate somehow. We're working on that. <laughs> Get back to you, Jay. Uh, and then behind you here, we have our recovery room. So we have uh, two ice barrels set up. So the water's continuously flowing. So we never have to fill these with, with ice or anything. It's all put on a cooler, got a filtration system. Uh, two person sauna, or is it considered a four person? It's, uh, it's two. Two person, yeah. We wanted just a smaller sauna because you know, how often are you in there with more than two people? 99% of the time, it's two at max, but this thing heats up so quickly and it gets so hot. 
Um, it's actually nice too, it runs off Bluetooth so I can be at home, start the sauna and then come in like 30, 45 minutes later once it's hot. So very convenient. Suji sauna, ice barrels, jaunt up here. So this room does not get used as much as I thought it would. I think everyone's just a little bit too shy about it, but this is just a hangout room. Just couch, TV. I kind of figured like, depending on where athletes are staying, uh, it might be, you know, a 30 minute drive each way to get home. Uh, so it's an hour in between your sessions. That isn't ideal. This is essentially Jason's room. Yes. <laughs> so that that's where I was getting to was so many of the other athletes, like they live close. So they go back and forth pretty easily. Jason has claimed this room as his own. He sleeps in here, I think, most days. And he's been trying to convince me to get a fish tank in here so he can listen to the filter while he sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad idea. That I, is that is his number one complaint about the gym. It's the, mo it's the, the, most, it's the most dad I've ever felt. They all put it on a group text and I said, absolutely not. And even Matt was like, oh, come on, let's get some fish. <laughs> no. All right, so. One thing I learned uh, from years of having gyms, does not matter what you do, there's always gonna be one surface that is a collection surface. And so we just leaned into it. I actually built one in. So half the idea with this was, you know, if a spouse or boyfriend, girlfriend are in town and they wanna watch the athletes or parents are in town, we wanted to make them feel welcome so they can watch their loved ones train. Put this here so that any of the employees wanna watch while they, you know, do some easy computer work. They can work here, kind of watch training, get some work done. You're li literally, as we walk through here, going to see precisely what Matt would have dreamt to, to have when he was active training and, and competing in, in any sport, honestly, either weightlifting or CrossFit. Yeah. So he, you know, there's improvements on his experience. There's things that he did in the past that he brought here as well. I'm excited for everybody to see that. Yeah, I think that was the main thing when I was designing this. I mean, in some sense, it's a very specific idea and others like very open-ended of what I wanted this place to look like. I think initially it was, you know, I want to have the ultimate CrossFit training facility. If you want to train for the games full time and you don't want to make any sacrifices on timing, equipment, availability, coaching, I wanted this to be the spot. And then I think that sort of grew into, we want this to be the spot for any barbell sport and then branch that into well you know if anyone's doing strength training conditioning we want this to be the place for athletes a lot of sports can do well here it was really cool i think it was the first day after the opening i i remember walking in and there was like you know three of the top crossfitters in the world all training rob kearney one of the world's strongest men training maddie rogers one of the best olympic weightlifters and i was like this is what i pictured this is this is my dream coming true of just like different sports but everyone has this the same goal of they want to be the best they can be and this is what it revolves around so put a bunch of like-minded people in one room and i think something special happens yeah we talked about at the opening that matt started in 200 square feet and he's ended up in 7,000. so yes. his initial gym was literally like four of these five of these squares so i actually i i drove by my parents old house so they've since sold and I left an, I knocked on the door, nobody answered. So I left a note in the mailbox kind of explaining the situation of like, hey, I know this is strange, but like I I competed in this sport, I built this company, and my my original home gym was the room at the base of the stairs. And we're having our grand opening next week. If you could if you wouldn't mind sending me the dimensions of that room, I would love to see it. And I'm pretty sure so it ended up being 224 square feet and five foot 11 ceilings. And so for the opening, I wanted to like put a tape print of the floor's footprint in here. And I'm 99% sure that rig has a bigger footprint than my original home gym. That was kind of cool to see <laughs> of like, all right, you know, started from there. Now we're here. Uh, total building square footage is 11 and a half thousand square feet. I think the gym space alone is 7,000. Said it every time I got a new gym. Oh, great, I'll never run out of space. I'm hoping that statement holds true here a little bit longer than it did everywhere else. For equipment, for all of the big equipment, you know, machines, stuff, machines, GHD, stuff like that. I think the ideal number for training is six. You know, if we're getting six of the elite all training together, I think that's about the maximum you can have and still have like a team unity bond feel. We wanted six of everything. Six biker, six GHD, six echo bikes, 
all the common weights on the dumbbells, we have six of everything, six foam plyo boxes, six hard plyo boxes. We just want to be able to, you know, ideally three men, three women, and they all have their own piece of equipment. Uh, this is a 55 foot strip of turf, kind of acted like a natural divide in the gym. You know, a lot of this stuff over here is stationary machines, quad extension leg sled. Then over here is a lot more of the typical Metcons where we're going to have multiple stations running around. So more open space on, on the far side, but this is great. We got, I think every form of sled, big dog sleds, the smaller sleds that we can take outdoors. And then the sleds that we saw at regionals, the cloth bottom ones. So torque tanks, yokes, kind of a nice, nice runway practice sprints. It's nice for like handstand walking stuff. It's all measured out one foot increments the whole way. So don't really need to ever take out the measuring tape. Great spot to lie down when you're in pain. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, I think it's important to point out and we will along the way. When you do something like this, you, we couldn't do this without friends, partners. I mean, I think of like a laundry list of things that contributed to this coming to life that goes back 10 years. But a lot of things that you see here from, you know, equipment, Rogue, um, Surface Co. Surface Co, the flooring and the turf. You know, Concept 2, um, these guys are, they've always, you know, I'd say like bet on us our entire lives, careers, um, and they've like tripled down on what we're doing now and, and we literally could not do this without them. I mean, this rig was, you know, brought to life through some of our thoughts, custom, uh, the secondary rig, which Matt can explain the purpose behind, um, you know, everything customized, uh, Rogue, it literally has gone way above and beyond as has the rest of our partners but again we couldn't do it without those guys all right so now we're kind of over in the more i don't know we, we always just call it the bodybuilding section um so we got benches cable machines every dumbbell from i think five pounds up to the 125 pound dumbbells kettlebells all the way from i think those are eight pounds up to these things that i never thought i would see again 203 pound kettlebells I wish I could say that was the only set I have. I have another set at home. You con you conquered those, dude. Oh my God, I hate those things. Where a lot more of the accessory work gets done at the end of training. We have a group that comes in, trains in the morning, so they can hit all the cable machines, lap pull down, seated row machine. This is Matt, Matt's favorite spot now in the gym right here, right? Well, I mean, thank, thank God I did have it because for five months, couldn't do anything. So I just got cleared to air squat last week so I can start doing that. So yeah, this was my home when I was recovering from uh, ACL surgery. Couldn't, couldn't do any weight bearing, couldn't squat. So I did a lot of curls. It's back. <laughs> kind of like the catch all of all the little equipment, bands, parallettes, all the awkward stuff. We have more rucks and vests than- Are any of these uh, vests that you competed in? Yeah. So yeah, these so are like all, the Murph vests? Yeah, so all the 511 vests, were ones that I've competed in. Oh yeah, one of them is from uh, Atlanta at the 2020 games. Two of them are from Murph. Yeah. Um, was there any other vests? Uh, I'm sure one of these rucks did me dirty a couple of years ago. <laughs> I'm sure. <A> famous <laughs> ruck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Zippers. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the bag fell out. Yes. This actually was kind of a lifesaver. I actually bought it before I injured my knee. You know, I, I, want a, I want a space where if an athlete's here and they get an injury or a tweak that they're not just like out of training and they're completely useless being here or like they feel like they're wasting the time. So a couple little things, a lot of the, the leg sled, the quad extension, hamstring curl. Down here we have a belt squat machine, reverse hyper, and then we have an arm bike. And they were all with the intent of, you know, if an athlete twists an ankle, they don't want to stop training and we don't want to force them to, you know, put more mileage on a damaged joint. So. Uh, Got, got this arm bike, I actually bought it a couple months prior to blowing out my knee. And then it came in, blew out my knee, and I was like, glad I have that. There's a couple, couple weeks this was in my garage garage, so it's like right. in my unfinished garage, and I would have to come down here, and Sammy would set up a Yeti chair and like get me all set up so I could do an arm bike workout. Half the workouts, you know, they had a nice little cry break right in the middle. You're about to be setting Sammy up in a Yeti chair very soon. Dude, I just remember just sitting there on the arm bike and I'm like, I'm trying, I'm going so hard. I'm just like so pathetic. I'm in like my basement garage. My wife is here setting it up for me, like cheering me on. And I would just be fucking crying. I'm like, this is so sad. <laughs> oh, we can talk about this rig. So 
Obviously, this is a custom-built rig from Rogue. Um, we sent them the dimensions of what we wanted. Of you know, I wanted at least six people to be able to you know squat on it or you know do full metcons. So they came back given the dimensions. We're an eight-station rig, so we have three ropes, four stations for muscle-ups, more pull-up bars than we know what to do with. But yeah, it goes up. Was the ceiling 24 feet? So I think this rig is 20 feet or 18 feet. A little over, yeah. It's yeah, it's 18 back. feet. Yeah. Um, yeah, so 18 foot rig, one piece. It is an absolute unit, and it fits the space really well. I, I just love how it, I don't know, sections off the entire gym. Got a lot of big bodies on that once, and it's solid. Try to leave a couple sections open for handstand push-up space or just any wall space. So when we actually got the building, it was just raw studs going across and insulation. We hung several sheets of plywood to close it all in. Uh, we'll have to, we'll have to put a, we're gonna give you, cue the before and after. So I have some before photos. Yeah. You and I standing right in the middle. I mean, yeah. there are birds living in here. This, I mean, if people, when people see that before photo, they're gonna be even more impressed. Well, a lot of the delivery guys that like, they'll poke their heads in and they're like, damn you guys clean this up like because it was like canon cameras i think before or something I, i'm not even sure yeah we just had a guy here this morning of like he said the previous he's like they're not here anymore are they no sir definitely not <laughs> whole plethora of different ropes obviously want to be familiar with every piece who knows what they're going to throw at people in competition so we just want to be familiar but also when it comes to like practicing skills of you know crossovers triple under stuff like that different people need different cues. Um, so for myself uh, to learn crossovers, the beaded rope was a game changer. So it's just different ropes kind of give you a different, different feeling. So I just like having a wide variety. So if somebody's having trouble getting that cue, we can just try different things. All the bars, specialty bars, Olympic bars, competition bars, stubby bars, axle bars, logs, handles, hex. I just wanted them all. <laughs> For any Olympic weightlifters that have any interest in training here, I did intentionally get a kilo set because I did want to bribe some weightlifters to start training here. Uh, that's my roots. You know, I like weightlifting. Got a couple more uh, easy accessory machines, standing hamstring curl, reverse hyper, probably one of the most valuable tools in terms of like simplicity, bang for the buck. That bad boy. Belt squat machine, it doesn't get used on a daily basis, it's more for, I just wanted when athletes had like a tweak in their back or shoulder and they didn't want to uh, put a barbell on their back, they could still still get some good training in. All the different sandbags, all the weights of D-balls. I think we have a, I think the back bag is a 250. Um, so Jay, Jay we, we leave that one for Jason. All the D-balls anywhere, I think we have from 50 pounds up to the 200. The 200 pound ball, I remember, I remember I was at your house, called the company, and they were like, you're sure you want one ball that weighs 200 pounds? I said, yes, sir. He goes, 200 pound ball. I was like, yeah. And I was fine. I'm like, dude, what is, what, what are, what are we missing here? Like, yes, I want a 200 pound ball. And he's like, just want to know because I have to go custom make it right now. And he was like, we don't stock these. So as soon as it's to you, it's yours. And I was like, yep, cool. So I think the shipping on that costs about as much as the ball. <laughs> managed to pick these up from an old uh, gymnastics or not an old gymnastics gym but a uh, friend of a friend in providence so great training just to have in the gym practice should we i think like we should be demoing all this stuff okay. no 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 i'm good on that uh <laughs> did enough demoing on yeah. the big stage yeah yeah so traversing across with and then dips on either end or you know even kicking up into a handstand uh just a nice tool to have and we finally have the space to allow it. Another piece of equipment I'm not allowed to touch. Yeah. I mean, ski erg, we got six of them. Uh, six of every Concept 2 machine. Uh, they're probably, I would say the C2 machines are the most utilized. You know, in my training, the rower for years was my number one used machine. And probably in my last couple seasons, the C2 bike became like the number one used machine. But C2 is such a staple in space that, you know, we don't want to be opening up or quad dominant. The ski erg's a nice change. You know, most of the conditioning machines we have are very lower body quad dominant so that one's upper body switch it up give the body a break this old bad larry that is the pig that i bought right after the 2015 games uh so it sat and collected dust for probably four years 
when I moved away. I would touch it once a year right before the games, make sure I still, still had it, was still good at it, and then it never came up again. So now, <laughs> now, now Jason and all the boys get to toss it around. I can't link the perfect story on this, but I remember talking to Matt on a Sunday, which at the time was the, the rest day. He hadn't rested. He was, I'm like, how are you doing? He's like, I'm super beat, tired. I've you know, been in the gym all afternoon. I'm like, what? What have you been doing? He's like, went in on a Sunday and he's like, all right, huh. I'm going to take, I'm going to learn how to, to, to beat you. And he just pig flipped for what? Like three hours and passed out on the floor. But mm. which by the way, like for anything that Matt saw any weakness in, that's precisely how he would attack. He'd, he'd actually, you know, bleed through it. So the pig Actually, got a lot of use on Sunday afternoons. Yeah. Yeah, so Sunday the gym was empty, so I'd go in and just turn on one light and just flip and flip and flip. And uh, at one point when I didn't have the technique down and I would get super tired when it would come off my hips, I didn't have, I didn't have the, the time to like catch it like a clean and a good grip, so I would just like fists, push up, and then did it so many times. I had to go to the hospital and I got, uh, I thought I had fractures in both hands. So. Went in to get an x-ray and they were like, oh, you know, what'd you do, punch a wall? And I was like, basically. And they were like, just on the one hand, I was 50 like. 50 times. I was like, no, <laughs> both hands. In the early days of doing the pig flip, I, I think I would, I would try to do 60 flips, one every 15 seconds. And then by the end, I want to say I was getting down to like 10 or 12 seconds for 100 flips. Don't, don't quote me on that, but this look is, it up. This is don't what, take my When I see this, this is what I see. How are you doing, guys? <laughs> nice table. We, we did have an athlete the other day. It was like a 40 minute grinder of a workout in a weight vest. Like it was brutal and it was like the hottest day of the year. And they would, they would do, they had 100 air squats or 150 and they'd do five and then sit down. <laughs> do five and then sit down. And it, like finally at a certain point, I was like, hey, no more of that. Get away from the pig. <laughs> yeah. We got our nice little biathlon target. So we can we can run some biathlon training in here. So CrossFit workouts, grab the air rifle, play some targets. So this rig is probably one of my, I'd say one of my like favorite parts about the gym was because I wanted, like I said, I was like, I want this to be the training facility for competitors. And if that is your goal that you're pursuing, I want this to be with no compromises and i've seen over the years you know familiarity with the competition floor just like you want it to be your home you want to be familiar with it you don't want to walk out there and be taken anything by surprise so one of those things that i figured all right there's very little we can control in a competition setting but one of the things we can con control is familiarity we built this rig um and it is an exact replica of the competition rig rings on far end rope in the middle uh, just a support beam and then pull up bar and then before the platforms are there so we can pull the platforms out of the way pretty easily But they can perform workouts here and they have up to a 90 foot lane So if workouts get announced for a competition or if we want to retest workouts from past or just you know The two weeks before competition start getting in that competition mindset We move all our all of our training over here so that they can practice the transitions, the where pieces of equipment are, the different, even something as simple as the rings being hooked off a solid crossbar instead of one of the shrimp trawlers. You know, there's not gonna be as much bounce or kick. Um, ring straps are a little bit different. The ropes are gonna be a different height. So it's just trying to find all of those things. And then also over on this rig, it's some raw bars, some spiel bars. On this one in competition, they don't give you raw bars, they're powder coated. So that's what, that's what we're running on this side trying to replicate competition as much we can trying to get the athletes as familiar with you know the competition space as we can one of the initial ideas too was train compete and what you forget is you have the best athletes in the world that just want to compete all, all day so <laughs> compete compete now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is uh, honestly when matt brought this up my only reaction was that is genius and like do we have the space but I mean, this is, I'm really proud of this. I mean, it's something we can do for those kids that you would have loved to have had, right? Mm -hmm. new, new ice barrel. Yeah, can we show that? Yeah. yeah, so we're just, uh, this just got delivered yesterday or two days ago. So it's the new ice barrel. Comes already pre-plumbed, but the biggest thing is that it's double walled. So it's insulated. So on the, 
the barrels in there, you saw there was the, I had like just a moving blanket wrapped around just to try to stop some of the condensation, give it a little bit more insulation. But then we also had to put trip trays under because it was single wall. So, you know, trying to keep water at 40 degrees in a hot room, they sweat a lot. So but this one should fix all those problems, insulated double walls. So it'll stay colder, it'll take less energy to keep it cold. So really looking forward to testing this out. And then we have kind of our, some of our strength machines. So quad extension, hamstring curl, glute bridge, leg sled. Uh, I've been putting in a lot of work with these. Really grateful I have them now that I'm uh, doing all my rehab for, for ACL. So I don't really, I don't really have to go into a PT clinic. I can just kind of do all my stuff here. And then Stairmaster, one, one of my favorite machines. If I knew how good those things were, I would have bought one 10 years ago. That is a phenomenal workout. I, I don't care what people say, you throw a weight vest on and hit that for 30 minutes, you will have a, a workout like you've never had before. It is awesome. <clears throat> Wall of Fame. Well, whatever. Oh yeah. So we have, our, we have all our athletes, and there are more that will be added soon, but uh, when we first opened the building, this was the crew that uh, trained with us, that we coached. So uh, we wanna always highlight you know, the people we you know, love and work with. Um, so this is a tribute to those guys and all their hard work. Got a lot of their accomplishments on there, especially the, the big guy up in the top left corner. This is cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what this looks like year to year. Yeah. You know, as, as we evolve. Matt, Matt's uh, humble to a fault, so as soon as I'm about to start talking about him, he walks away and hides. <laughs> so he's blushing from here, I can see it. These are our championship banners. Um, kind of like what you would see in a traditional, you know, big sports stadium where they hang banners for conference championships and world championships. And so we talked about it. We had this idea for everything that we were a part of with each athlete. Because people will ask the question like, why doesn't Katrin have a banner up there? Well, this is the first year that we'll be a part of her team officially um, on the coaching side. So whatever she accomplishes will be put up there on a banner. So, and the athletes made that decision. We asked them, hey Mel, do you want all your games finishes, Jason, you, they're like, no, I just, I wanna see what the work I've done here. And of course, we're gonna pay tribute to Matt, the greatest to ever do it. Um, that banner is amazing, honestly. Like when I come in here and work out, I look at that and just like those medals out there and it just like gives me such great memories and feels. Um, there is a, like, I mean, I think like people hear us say about hard work and his hard work all the time. It's like, when I see that, I mean, Man, there is so much blood, sweat, and tears that went into that. Literally, an abundance of each. Um, I mean, five-time fittest man on earth, five in a row. Um, I can't even begin to, to quantify and explain how hard that is. Um, and I think it's beautiful that he gets to see that on a daily basis. Because um, it reminds him all his hard work and so and and that's the point for each of these guys so I'm looking forward to next year having a bunch more and the only thing we really would love is that they look at that and they're proud and I know everything that we see up there they look at that and they're like damn I'm a badass I did a great job I worked my butt off for that really cool feature these are our what we're called proud partners we're really proud of the people that we're partnered with that's kind of where that comes from um and you know and this is evolving more people, you know, people who have contributed to our success over the last 10 years and um, are a part of what we're doing today. HWPO, Matt related, myself related. So Rogue, Goad, Concept2, Ice Barrel, Surface Co, Podium, Fitter, Yeti. I mean, it's, um, they're all a part of our history. They're all a part of our, you know, current day-to-day -day, you know and, and you know they help us be better on a daily basis Th these guys are inspiration for us uh and support so we literally couldn't do this without them uh so we thought it was really important that people first saw that when they walk in here because this isn't just a you know us thing this is you know an everybody thing that contributes to this and these guys are such a big part and pillar of what we do all right guys thank you for joining along on the tour of the new hwpo headquarters uh we are obviously very proud of it but keep an eye open we're going to be opening up hwpo member training days so if you are a member on any hwpo track we're going to be opening up opportunities for you guys to come out 
meet the whole crew, experience the space. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Athlete training camps prior to some big competitions. We love having, uh, you know, other HWPO athletes or just friends come out, throw down, have a great time. So keep an eye out. We hope to see you soon. Have a good one.